Lots of people are complaining about the cyclists who have been caught, in inverted commas, riding at almost 40 miles an hour in a 30 mile an hour limit. Caught on police video, which has been viewed almost 2 million times, it has created quite the stir in the comment section over on X, and lots of people debating as to whether or not cyclists are supposed to comply with the speed limits or not. Even some professionals being caught out and being on the wrong side of this one. So lo and behold, here I am to explain the situation to you. But first of all, if you are new to me, I am Daniel Shensmith, a barrister of England and Wales, and I love to help you to understand law. So I'll be really grateful if you bop that like button and subscribe subscribe on the way in or at any point you find this video useful. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. So let's move over to this video. This video here, the police said that they pulled these cyclists over to chat to them. Uh, Devon and Cornwall Police uh, Roads Policing Team said, cyclists, please be mindful of your speeds and just how this will affect you in the event of a collision. This group today on Dartmoor observed traveling at near 40 miles an hour in a 30 mile an hour restricted road, all stopped and offered appropriate words of advice. Let's take a quick look at the video. You can see here quite clearly uh, the GPS speed of 39 miles per hour here, and the cyclists maintaining roughly the same distance away from the police car. So over some distance, the police car following these cyclists quite reliably confirms that these cyclists are riding at almost 40 miles an hour. Now, naturally, that has uh, spilled over into quite the debate uh, on X, or Twitter if you'd prefer to still call it that, um, as to whether or not cyclists are supposed to comply with the law in terms of speed limits for vehicles, which is really what we're talking about. The short answer is no, they don't. Um, there are certain rules that apply to cyclists, as you well uh, imagine, but not, interestingly, the speed limits. Now, whilst um, cyclists do have to comply with road signs and traffic signals, they don't have to comply strictly with the speed limits. And that is because the speed limits come about, well, they first came about at the uh, early part of the 20th century, but they made, it, they made their way into the highway code and the road traffic regulations and so on, uh, which I'm going to explain just here. First of all, let's start with the highway code. We've got rule 124. You must not exceed the maximum speed limits for the road that your vehicle um, and a speed limit of 30 miles an hour, etc., etc. We move down here. The type of vehicle and built up area, single carriageway, dual carriageway, motorways, and it lists the vehicles and their respective speed limits. But, as you probably gather, cyclists are not on this list. So rule 124 of the highway code uh, regarding speed limits does not apply to cyclists. Moving over to the Road Traffic Regulation Act 1984, which is where the restrictions for speeds currently reside. Um, regulation 86 or section 86. Speed limits for particular classes of vehicles. It shall not be lawful for a person to drive a motor vehicle of any class on a road at a speed greater than the speed specified in Schedule 6 of this Act as the maximum speed in relation to a vehicle of that class. So a motor vehicle, but cyclists, uh, cycles rather, are not motor vehicles. So that doesn't apply to those either. So, pray tell. Uh, what are cyclists doing wrong, if anything, when they are riding too fast? Well, not necessarily anything. They're not necessarily breaking any law by riding, quote-unquote, too fast, which is why it was in quotation marks when they were caught riding at almost 40 miles an hour in the first place, uh, because uh, being caught to suggest that they're doing something wrong. But technically, they're not. Unless, of course, they are riding carelessly, inconsiderately, or even dangerously. Or the uh, long-lost cousin-in-law of wanton and furious cycling, which is where someone is actually injured or property is damaged. However, more simply than that, we have the Road Traffic Act 1988, sections uh, 28 and 29. Uh, in reverse order of seriousness, we have careless and inconsiderate cycling. If a person rides a cycle on a road without due care and attention or without reasonable consideration for other persons using the road, he's guilty of an offence. Um, moving up uh, in dangerousness, but down in the sections, uh, we go to section 28. Dangerous cycling. A person who rides a cycle on a road dangerously is guilty of an offence. 
for the purposes of subsection one, a person is regarded as riding dangerously if uh, the rider falls far below what should be expected of a competent, careful cyclist. And it would be obvious to a competent and careful cyclist that riding in a way would be dangerous. And in subsection two, dangerous refers to any uh, either injury uh, of any person or serious damage to property and determining the purposes of the subsection will be obvious to a competent and careful cyclist in a particular case. Um, shall regard not only the circumstances, but to be expected to be aware, but also any circumstances shown to have been within the knowledge of the accused. Um, and so these two sections can apply to cyclists. Uh, and then, of course, we have the wanton and furious cycling, which requires that someone is hurt or property is damaged. It is possible, however, for local bylaws to set speed limits for cyclists. For example, Richmond Park has a speed limit of 20 miles an hour, and this applies both to vehicles and to cyclists. And so even if the speed limit is not absolutely clear in that area, but there is a bylaw limiting that speed, you'll need to be aware of it. But usually those speed limits are going to be made clear to everybody entering and therefore every cyclist, every driver is going to have to comply with the local bylaws for those speeds. And finally, it should go without saying that I am not, of course, telling every cyclist to go absolutely mad and ride at any speed that you like. That is obviously not what I'm saying. Cyclists should ride with their own safety and the safety of others in mind. So I would encourage all cyclists to ride sensibly. So strictly speaking, the cyclists caught on video are not actually doing anything wrong, unless they are riding in such a way as this, which from the video, in my view, they're not doing anything wrong. They are in, uh, yes, they are riding uh, to a breast, and in a pack, so to speak, which the highway code allows for. Many drivers criticize cyclists for riding uh, anything other than single file. But in fact, it is often safer to ride uh, double breast rather than in single file. So that's what cyclists very often do for their own safety. But otherwise, they were riding quite uh, neatly, quite uniformly, in my view, a little bit on the fast side. So I suspect the police have pulled them over just to warn them as to the effect, as they said in the tweet, the post, uh, that that might have an effect if they end up in a collision. So hopefully that resolves the debate uh, and brings everybody up to speed um, so that we don't go round and round in circles and um, that's a vicious cycle of... Uh, debate. So hopefully that's of interest to you. And just as a tiny little bonus at the end of this video, there are other situations where cyclists can be guilty of riding whilst over the limit for drink or drugs, but it won't affect their driving license and they don't have to submit to a breath test. But more about that in another video. Make sure you subscribe. Watching.